Welcome back to Motoring Box. I'm Sean McKellar and today we are doing a buyer's guide on the BA Falcon range. So the BA Falcon range came in a few different models. You had the XT, which is the base model, poverty spec, hubcap special. You had the Futura, which added a few little goodies. You had an XR6, which added a sporty touch. You had the XR8 as well, with the eight cylinder engine, of course. You had the Fairmont and you had the Fairmont gear. This model marked a turning point in the Ford Falcon's development and they sort of threw out a lot of aspects of the old Falcons and then introduced a lot of new items. So that can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing because it means that Ford were also throwing out some things that made the Falcon extremely reliable. So I'm not gonna run through all the differences between those models, but I will put a link up here in the top corner to a video I filmed on a BA Falcon sales brochure. And that, even though it was for a Mark II, that will list a lot of the options, a lot of the features, specifications for all of the different models. First of all, when you're looking to buy one of these cars, you really need to do a walk around like I'm doing first. And if you saw my AU Falcon buyer's guide video, we're really looking for identical things here because they are essentially the same body shell. If you have a look at the doors, it's all AU Falcon. They've really just sort of put a new front and back on it. They did a lot more underneath, of course. But really, yeah, we are looking for the same things here. We're looking for body panels that are all matching in color. If the car's been garaged, it should have paint that's still in pretty good condition. This car is actually Mercury Silver M7. There were some colors of these cars which didn't stand up well over time, especially the reds. There was an orange color, the name escapes me, but I'll put it up on screen. That color in particular, I would avoid it because they fade terribly and a lot of the panels will be mismatched and you'll end up with a car which is sort of yellow on top and then dark orange down the bottom. They just look terrible. Another color I would warn you about is one called Shockwave and that was like a darkish kind of a solid blue. And that one actually had issues with the paint flaking off in giant strips. So I like to pop the bonnet and I like to have a look around the engine bay first. There's obviously parts of these vehicles that rust that you can't really check when you're inspecting one but you just have to inspect what you can. So I like to pop the bonnet. I like to have a look around the edges of the engine bay. And we will talk about the engine soon. This is a uh, XR6 turbo, of course. But I like to look around sort of under the seams here of the front guards and make sure there's no sort of tea stainy, rusty marks coming out from anywhere. If it looks pretty clean, that's a good sign. And really the car itself, the condition of the paint in general is gonna tell you. Has the car been garaged for the majority of its life? Or if it's totally sunburnt and faded, that's a warning sign that it's been out in the weather. And just like the AU, these cars do not like being left out in the weather because they are very susceptible to rust. So if it's looking clean in the engine bay, it's also a good idea to open some of the doors and have a look down the bottom of the A pillars here where the door hinges are on the front. You can do the typical thing where you look under the doors. If I can get my camera to adjust, but as long as there's no rust, this is somewhere where the rust does love to sort of get a foothold. And as well, these rubbers here along the, uh, the tops of the doors, you can actually peel them back and it should be nice and clean under all of those spots. So you just pat them back down. In particular, it can also get pretty bad down the side of the windscreen here. So this car, there is always going to be a little bit of dirt and grunge in there, but there should not be any rust. So do have a look. These are very easy to peel back. The seller should not have an issue with you doing that. Make sure you check all of them. Runs over the rear door here as well. Just peel everything back and have a good look. Rust can definitely hide under there because dirt and mud gets trapped and that just provides ideal conditions for rust. Being that uh, a lot of BA Falcons have side skirts, you can't really check the sills very easily, but you can sort of jump down underneath the car if you're keen and try and get a look underneath and just see like are there any, any warning signs there on the bits of metal you can see. So if the front's looking good, if around the doors are looking good as well, come and check the boot. A few spots on here, if the car has a rear spoiler, you'll wanna check around the feet of that spoiler just to see are there any bubbles on the paint because water can actually leak in underneath the spoiler where it meets the boot and you will sort of see it poking out the side there if there are any. This car is nice and clean, but that's a typical Falcon problem again. So you check around where the spoiler mounts to the boot. And then on the inside, just have a look as well where the spoiler bolts on, make sure it's clean. There really shouldn't be much else in the boot lid. You can sort of check 
up around the top here of underneath the garnish and whatnot, along the bottom edge. There are some drainage holes in these boots, but uh, they can still sort of fill up with water and cause you some grief. Another spot is down here, in the corner of the boot. So uh, the BA Falcon is not quite as bad as far as rust goes compared to the AU Falcon, but it can still sort of rust around these little hinges here, the little pin where the, uh, the boot strut mounts to. Um, the AU Falcon has a big void in here where water and dirt and rust can build. The BA is not quite as bad. Uh, this car as well, you can see the, the rubber on the window here is kind of a bit cooked. It doesn't really affect the seal of the window, it's just a cosmetic thing. So. Don't be too concerned if you see something like that. So those are the spots that you can check relatively easily when it comes to rust. The B series and the AUs do love to rust behind the tail lights, but you can't really check that very easily. Um, they do love to rust in behind the front wheel, sort of in behind the splash guard down in here. But again, you can't check that very easily either. So from there, you should do all your typical checks. You should check that all of the door locks work, lock the doors, make sure that none of them open if you pull the handle because actuators on these cars are a really big deal. Uh, so pull all of the handles, make sure none of the doors open. If they do open, it just means the actuator needs to be replaced. It is a security problem because you can't lock the car. And also uh, sometimes the actuators can prevent the car from realizing that the door is shut as well. So you'll get in and you'll shut the doors and you'll start driving. It'll give you a warning and the car will say that one of your doors is still open. So that again is a signal or a sign that uh, the actuator in a particular door is cooked and you will not really know which one it is until you uh, replace it. But in general, if you're happy with how it looks, if everything works, you're onto a good thing. So when it comes to the engine, most Falcons are going to have the silver top Barra 182. It's a very dependable engine, very powerful for a naturally aspirated engine. It is a four litre, of course, so that'd be why. And they don't really suffer from too many problems either. And really the biggest things that I've seen relate to if the engine has a miss or a hesitation or it's running a bit rough, you'll probably need to replace the coil packs and maybe the spark plugs. And these are different engines compared to the single overhead cam Intec and previous. They had their spark plugs nice and accessible down the side here. This is a dual overhead cam, so they're actually underneath this cover. So you need to pull this cover off. In a turbocharged engine, you need to take the intake and everything off as well. Pull the cover off and they're all down the middle here. So if the engine on the car you're looking at is sort of missing and carrying on and the owner says he doesn't know what it is, it's probably going to be the coil packs and do the plugs when you're there. So it's probably going to cost you about $250 to $300 in parts. It is relatively simple and definitely something you can do yourself. The other thing, if the owner says to you, hey, the engine runs well, but sometimes when you start the car, it'll run super rough and it won't actually let you drive. But don't worry, because if you turn it off and turn it on again, it runs fine. If they say that, that is a 100% sure as hell <laughs> hint that the intake manifold gasket is shot. And that's the gasket where this intake actually bolts to the head. It's right down in there. And it's one big long gasket that when it sort of dies, it breaks up into like a hundred different pieces. And when some of those pieces drop out, it means that this engine is actually sucking in air through those holes into the cylinders. What happens is the engine ECU doesn't know what to do because as far as it's concerned, the throttle is shut. It sees that the revs are still climbing and it just panics because it's an uncontrollable situation. What it does is the ECU goes into a limp home mode. It cuts three of the cylinders. The engine runs rough, just enough to get you out of trouble if you're driving, for example, when it happens. Let you get to the side of the road, turn it off. And then when you turn it on again, it'll run fine until it encounters that situation. From my experience, it usually happens on a cold start when you've got the air conditioner turned on. Um, you can have other things like if the coolant tank is going green or sort of brown it probably needs to be replaced, but they're about 60 bucks. They're not a lot of money. Uh, radiators are probably getting to the end of their life as well around this age, so you might be up for one of those. It's all kind of maintenance related items. And if you follow my channel, I've pretty much gone through everything on this engine. So have a look at my channel, have a look at the video playlist I've got on this car. So pretty much all six cylinder Falcons had the Barra 182. This is of course an XR6 Turbo, which is the red Barra 240T. 
Now this engine actually cops a lot of flack because people say it is a weak engine, it has skinny rods, and that is kind of true. If you want to see what these things are capable of, do check out the dyno tuning video I filmed of this car. I actually got 330 kilowatts at the wheels with just some sort of mild modifications. We've got an intercooler, got an exhaust, we've got valve springs, we've got injectors. We upgraded the engine where it counts. And this thing is a beast. You know, if you're after sort of a 300 kilowatt XR6 turbo, definitely do consider a BA or BA Mark II XR6 turbo because they are bargains compared to the later cars. They don't like it if you throw an exhaust with a, a turbo back, you know, a new header dump pipe on there. The ECU doesn't like that. It'll cause the engine to overboost, things like that. So if you're gonna modify these, you pretty much need to get them retuned whenever you do anything massive. You can also get Haltech plug-in ECUs. These are unavailable at the moment. Um, but they make your life a lot easier too. So that's about it in here, guys. They're pretty simple beasts once you get your head around where everything is. Um, do your typical checks for oil leaks down the front of the engine. Anywhere you can look, it is a little bit packed in here, but just have a look along the block anywhere you can. Get a, get a torch and have a look. Have a look under the car too, under the sump, and make sure there's no oil leaking down. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna touch on the eight-cylinder engines too much, but I will say, uh, on a lot of Falcon models, you could option the Barra 220 V8. That was a 5.4 litre V8, 220 kilowatts. Those engines are different to the Boss 260, which was found in the XR8. I'm not really up to speed with what the differences were, but they are different engines. They're not just a different tune. So by all accounts, I think they're pretty reliable. I have heard things about timing chains on the Boss 260s and 290s. So if you're looking for big power on one of these, I would recommend the Barra Turbo. If you're looking for reliability, the Barra 182. If you want the V8 soundtrack and, and the noise and the, the fanfare that comes with that, then yeah, you can consider the XR8s. They're still reliable. Barra 220s as well. Most cars had the four-speed automatic. Uh, the only thing is they can suffer from the transmission cooler failing. It's actually mounted down on the side of the engine and it means that when it fails, the transmission fluid actually mixes in with the engine coolant. And you milkshake your transmission and your engine, you can fuck up a lot of things. So popular modification, which I've covered before, is you can fit a transmission cooler. And that just separates the cooling circuit from your transmission and separates it from the cooling on your engine so that those two cannot mix. But otherwise the four speed auto on these Falcons is reliable. It's not that great. The, the first gear is very tall. They're not quick off the line, but they are definitely reliable gearboxes. The other two gearboxes which are available on the BA range was the T5 five-speed manual. They're a pretty decent gearbox. Um, the early XR6 turbos had them as well. Didn't fare too well with the extra power, but on the Barrow 182, they're fine. And then on the Mark II, the XR6 Turbo has actually got the T56 six-speed manual, which this car is. So if you are getting an XR6 Turbo and you are after a manual, I would probably go for the Mark II, just like this. They are a little bit hard to find. Probably 80 or 90% of cars were automatics. So that is kind of going against you if you're looking for one of these. XR6 Turbos and XR8s had a limited slip diff as standard. I think every other model it was optional, but they came with uh, single spinner open diffs as standard. The only other thing I'll mention about the diffs is these cars are famous for blowing diff bushes as well. So the bushes are the things that sort of hold and separate the diff from the car and they're, you know, they're little rubber bushes and when they blow out, uh, you'll get assorted knocking noises uh, from the rear end of the car over the bumps and pretty much all the time you're driving. So I think a fair assumption is maybe every 100,000 kilometers, you might be up for those bushes to be replaced. And also these cars are pretty famous for the front sway bar bushes needing replacement too. They're a simple job that you can do yourself. Bushes on the Control Blade uh, IRS rear suspension is definitely something that many people couldn't do. Every single sedan had the Control Blade IRS independent rear suspension. Uh, in that regard, BF Falcons kind of suffer from much the same issues. They're pretty much identical mechanical wise. They did of course come with the six speed ZF Auto. They had their own issues. I'm not sure if they're quite as reliable as the four speed autos. It might just come down to maintenance. And that's really it about these cars. Do check the maintenance records and make sure that the car's been maintained well over the years. Fluid flushes every year for the engine. 
um, the gearbox has been maintained. Bushes, just go through, you know, there's, it's pretty common that power steering pumps will need replacing over time. So leaf through the maintenance book and don't be surprised if it says it's had a new power steering pump, it's had various things replaced, that's just Falcons in general. So for the BA Falcon, even though it is based on the AU, in a many, many different ways, they sort of threw out almost everything when it came to the interior and they've gone for this brand new dashboard, new interior. Um, the AU Falcon in a lot of ways was probably the toughest interior Ford ever made. And then the BA was kind of a little bit delicate <laughs> because it had some issues. In particular, these grab handles here on the doors, on all four doors can actually break. The mounting points in behind here where the top and the bottom meet the door card can actually snap out because they're just plastic and they become brittle. You can fix them, I have filmed a video on that before. So as with any Falcon, you should jump in. You should make sure everything works. Uh, these cars came in many different trims and interior specifications. Uh, base model cars had an ICC which had a small sort of thin mono screen. So a lot of XR6s, XR8s probably came with them as standard. Ford had a lot of different options which you could spec. You could option luxury interiors which uh, had sports leather seats, color ICCs. These screens can actually get black holes starting to sort of form on them as well. So uh, the good news is you can buy replacement LCD panels. And uh, so this is the color ICC. There was a dual zone model which had different buttons along here. It had silver buttons, uh, the dual zone climate control, but otherwise it was the same screen. So they were the three different ICCs. This car, I think, had the sports leather option. So that was the leather seats with the suede, bumpy suede. These are actually really cool. If you can find a car with these fitted, I would recommend them. I think they're much more comfortable than the full leather. This car actually had premium sound optioned as well. So that's the full color ICC, but it's also the subwoofer, which you can see in the center there in the back in that raised section. So do bear in mind, um, yeah, there's lots of different options which people could spec on these cars. And again, that link that I provided before to the brochure with the Ford iDesign pack, you could go crazy with what you wanted on there. So this car is pretty much standard apart from that. These gauges were aftermarket, after the fact. It's got the standard leather wheel. You could also get chunky steering wheels options. So yeah, have a look around and just get a general vibe of how the interior condition is. Um, you can get wearing on the leather bolsters on the driver's seat. You can get a roof lining that's starting to sort of drop. This one's still pretty good for the most part, but yeah, don't be surprised. They're about $250 to fix or pay someone to fix it. But otherwise, I would just do the typical checks. I would start the engine, I'd make sure it's smooth. I would check that the aircon works. I'd check that the heater works because some people, when there's heater issues, they'll actually bypass the heater core and it just won't work, but it means that it won't be leaking coolant. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, if the windows have any issues, it could just be a matter of needing to spray the tracks with silicon spray. If they're not working at all, it could be issues with the switches. You could try and pop them out and clean them. Typical Falcon issues. And when you are doing the test drive, I would definitely recommend getting out onto a highway or a motorway and at least hitting 100 kilometers per hour to make sure the car runs smooth. And then I would also lean on the brakes at that speed as well and just break down to sort of 80 or 70, make sure there's no one behind you, of course, just to make sure that the brakes are nice and smooth. If there's any pulsing through the pedal, it does mean that you're probably up for new rotors or your rotors need to be machined because these cars do have issues with their brake boosters sticking. And that means the pads are dragging on the disc, they overheat the disc and then the disc warps. But now that you know what causes the problem, you can make an educated offer to the seller, take a couple of grand maybe, <laughs> maybe not that much, but take some money off the price to allow you to fix it. There's probably a few other things I'm missing here because I'm just doing this off the cuff. I haven't got any notes. These are just things that I've realized after owning this car for about two years. So do look at the comments below. And if you're out there and you know some things that I've missed, do put them in the comments as well, because they're great cars. I would highly recommend you purchase one if you're interested. For an XT, I would probably be looking at about four or 5,000 at the most. Some people will say that's too much, but you get what you pay for generally on the used car market. So four or 5,000 for a car that's been well-maintained, it's got service history, it hasn't got faded paint, it hasn't got damage, it hasn't got noisy diff bushes, you get my drift. So probably 
four or five grand for an XT or a Futura. For an XR6, if it's an automatic, it's probably about six grand, probably maybe seven. Some people wouldn't pay that much, but you know, if it's a manual, definitely add another thousand or two on top. If it's an XR8, it's probably 10, 12. It could be more, it depends on the model, depends on the color, on the options, etc. For an XR6 Turbo, I would argue they're worth a little bit more than the XR8s. So they seem to go for a little bit more, so it's probably, for one like this, I would probably say at least 15. And then you have your Fairmonts and your Fairmont gear, so they're, they're less, obviously, for six cylinders. They're probably seven or 8,000. And then you've got your FPVs. So FPVs do share a lot with these cars, but they have different engines, different body kits, but they do share a lot of the same issues. So a lot of the things I've talked about here do apply to the FPVs. GTs, Typhoons, they're probably a, at least 25, 30 grand starting point. Some of the rarer models and trims and options, I've seen them going for 40 or 50. That kind of turns me off FPVs. To me, they're not special enough to sort of justify that pricing, but there's gonna be people out there who disagree. FPV owners, hello. <laughs> so that's about it for the BA Falcon range. Definitely consider an XR6 Turbo if you can find one, because think about the Holden VL Turbo. For a long time, they were not worth very much money and then they suddenly went through the roof. And I actually got a build sheet on this car and I was shocked that there apparently were only just under 3,000 BA Mark II XR6 turbos built in manual. So that is not many cars and it does mean that they are rare and they're absolutely gonna be worth money in the future. Think about buying one of these, using it, enjoying it, looking after it, and then what's it gonna be worth in say 2030 or 2040? It's gonna be big money. We've only been without Australian manufacturing for about five years now. And yeah, all of that's going to compound the longer that goes on. So they are investments, but they're absolutely cars you should be buying and using and enjoying right now while you still can. And another thing to consider, people are going to be thinking, how much fuel do these cars drink? But you think about, if you bought this car for $15,000, compare that to say, a Toyota Corolla Hybrid. They're probably, what, $35,000, $40,000? Think about that $25,000 price difference in the two cars for a start. That's gonna buy a lot of fuel to power this thing. So you could buy one of these and be way ahead of someone who's purchased one of those new Toyota hybrids and be having a hell of a lot more fun in the process. And what's this car gonna be worth compared to the Toyota in 10 years time? This thing, God knows what it's gonna be worth. I would probably say at least 30 grand. What's the Toyota hybrid gonna be worth? Probably 25, 20. So, that car's gone back 20 grand, whereas this one's probably gone up 20 grand. So do the math and don't give a shit about what petrol costs because petrol is still available and it's still relatively cheap, even at $2 a litre here in Australia. So that's about it, guys. I won't rant on too long. BA Falcons are good buying, okay? Bear that in mind. Get out there and have a look. Try and find one that's in, got low kilometres. Try and find one that's as stock standard as possible. It's been looked after, it's been maintained and you'll absolutely love them. So thank you very much for watching guys. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.